Welch. Pause. Engage. Hello and welcome to O2 Inside Line, where O2 and the RFU take you behind the scenes of England rugby. This week we're inside the camp with the England analysts. But first of all, we have a chimps tea party with Chris Ashton and Lee Dixon. <laughs> So in keeping with all things English, we've got scones, a nice pot of tea, some finger sandwiches. Then we're going to test the nerves of Chris Ashton and Lee Dixon in a giant game of Jenga. First of all there, guys, help yourself because I'm sure this is a bit of a rare treat. It is for you, actually. Look at that saucer and stuff. Eh? You don't get that in Wigan. You don't get that in Wigan, son. There you go. That's a strainer. It's not a sieve. It's a strainer. Oh, is that Plastic real silver? Is that real silver? Like that? That's not what you put your peas wet in. <laughs> um, I bet you had custard um, sauces at home, though. Uh, Can you in the Dixon no, household? Really Just mugs. No. Mugs. Big, big mugs of tea. Where about you from? That. I was born in Germany. Dad's in the army, so moved around a heck of a lot. So how did it come about? Because you were playing for Scotland under I under 90, no, really? No way. <laughs> no way. I did not know that. Is that did true? You know? Yeah, that's true. Ashi. Yeah. Game against France at the weekend. You effectively won it for us with that tackle. He wasn't watching, so I thought it's my chance to go and make an actual tackle and not miss one. So I wasn't watching, I just went in. So what was it like um, in Paris again? Because that was where you had your international debut two years ago. It just actually clicked last weekend and we started to play together a little bit more. So what does it feel like now to be starting with the number nine shirt on ahead, ahead of Ben Youngs? There's a lot of good nines about, but you know, playing at a good club like Northampton, I knew I could, if I got that opportunity to come here and, and train, um, yeah, <laughs> good club <laughs> and <laughs> On cue! <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking through the cake thing at you here. It's getting a bit... That's better. It's like you're framed now in a beautiful cake. Um, sorry, what was the Should question? your head, the <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what's it like under the Stuart Lancaster regime? How different is it? I think it's good because of what he's seen on... He was always in and around the squad, especially during the World Cup and during the start of it. So he's seen how we all were as a group and seen how, how coaching was. So. He's just kind of changed that completely and put his own, own little stamp on it. Should he get the job permanently? <coughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we've enjoyed a bit of afternoon tea. Let's get stuck into some giant-sized Jenga. You've got to put it on the top, Abby. That's how it works. You don't just collect them. <laughs> Is it because you three are really small that this looks so big? What's the um, game plan this weekend? Game plan. On you. You're asking the wrong man, if I'm honest. <laughs> he did video analysis on a game and only did one side of the game rather than the opposition as well. Yeah, but no, right. no one told me. He just watches CBBS. Goes down. I got called up watching the laptop and he just watches CBBS in the background. Okay, cause you're going to lose this, and I'm going to take them. It's gone. Oh, I'm amazed you took that one. I mean, work it out. If there's me. two in a row, that's not going to work, is it? That's going to fall. I'll be that. No, it won't. That won't. Let's go. Okay, no. Oh! We nearly killed the, the munchkin. <laughs> I've only just seen I can see it now for the first time. As a prize, my favourite player so far in the back line for the Six Nations. I'm giving you those. I'm awarding that, and I genuinely believe that. Thank you very much. You played, had an excellent Six Nations. Don't let me down on Saturday. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give these to you, Ashy, because hopefully the sugar will give you a boost to lead you towards scoring a try at the weekend. Thanks very much, guys. Good luck this weekend. Now let's go and see what some of the other guys are up to inside the camp. So with uh, Mike Hughes, one of the analysts here, we saw you doing a bit of line-outs and scrums uh, with Wig. Talk me through what you were doing there. We were filming the line-outs. Uh, we code them live using some analysis software, which we can then send down to iPads for Wig if we want to review them live. Well, can you just explain how important it is what the analysts do? Oh, they're vital, they're vital. Cog and our machine, they work exceptionally hard as well. We actually film using the iPad, then review that with the player instantly which is an exceptional tool. I wish we'd had that years ago. On a match day, how involved are you guys with Stuart and Wig and, and, and Faz? We sit up in the coach's box with those guys. During the game, uh, we get a number of different camera angles coming in and allow them to replay any of the game they want from the various angles. We've got three views. You've got a delay feed, a live feed and a reverse feed. They're the views I look at and I'm always banging them on the show. Let me see that scrum again. Let me see that line out again. We, we capture all those different camera angles live, but also produce some, some real-time stats for the guys, certain KPIs that they, they want to get hold of during the game to give them a bit of a barometer of, of how we're playing. It's quite hectic on a match day then, is it? It can be it can be a little bit stressful in there, yeah. There's a lot of things going on. Quite a few laptops uh, up and running. Stuart punching the ceiling, those sorts of things as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. That. When uh, <laughs> it does get a bit more stressful when there's a bit of blood uh, knocking around the box as well. Yeah. Mo. Hello, Ben. You're cooking some nice steaks for us tonight. Well, I hope they're nice. Hello. Hey, buddy. Medium rare sirloin, please. What goes into your steak? TLC. Salt and pepper, high heat, 
and a bit of lemon. Chief, have you, have you had one of my steaks yet? No, not yet. I'm uh, pretty excited. Hey, Mo. Yo. That lampshade looks like your lid. <laughs> uh, one of the steaks were raw. It was meant to be uh, mm, well done. Who's? Mirzi. No, he wanted, uh, <laughs> medium he, wanted, he wanted medium rare. He wanted medium rare. Well, so you're a happy customer? Yep, very happy customer. Mo, we've done a good job there. I questioned the lemon on the steak, but it turned out to be quite nice. Thank you, Mo. Thanks, buddy. This is it, Oz. This is where England are going to be closing out their RBS Six Nations campaign. Is it a good time to be playing Ireland? Well, I think it is off the back of the French game. England were great against France, and they'll be really keen to get back here to Twickenham. A full house, St. Patrick's Day, a late kickoff. The bars are open beforehand. It is going to be one hell of an atmosphere in here. England had a great game against France, but there's still issues around discipline. Well, you say that, but I sort of disagree a little bit. I think that, OK, we gave away a lot of penalties. I don't think Stuart Lancaster will be too bothered with the discipline. You mentioned Stuart Lancaster. Let's, let's talk about his position and going into the future. Do you think he'll be coach? I think he should be coach. I think he's already showed he's set a culture very quickly. We spoke to the players. They both said during our little tea with them that they would like him to be a coach, and that's a good sign. You know, the players are the ones that we should be talking to. It doesn't matter what reputation you've got before. I think it matters what this current crop of players think, and they all really admire Stuart. I and mean, there's a real team ethos in that game. There's such commitment, but there were still some standout players, weren't there? Oh, there was. There were some brilliant performances. Let's talk about Tom Croft. His pace around the field, his line-out steals, he was the man of the match, without a doubt. And for me, he's the best number six in the Northern Hemisphere. Ferris may argue with that at the weekend, we'll find out. Owen Farrell kicked the ball away a little bit, some people said, but I think he got us out of pressurised situations. His defence was immense. Manu Tuolangi showed great pace for the try. Dan Cole was mm. awesome in the scrum. You could go throughout that entire, entire side. Chris Ashton's tackle, I think, was the turning point in the match. His tackle early on, which made the try for Tuolangi, could have set the game on a different track had he not made that decision. Look, I think this England side has made massive strides towards creating a nation of proud rugby supporters. I was in the stand in Paris and there's a lot of people there. Just everyone is right behind this team again and that's down to Stuart Lancaster and all the squad buying into what it means to play for England. It's our last game before we go off on our summer tour to South Africa and I think the England side, theoretically, I think could win this by 10 points. That's it, Oz. I know, can you believe it? The end of 0-2 inside line for this season. But you know what? England are still in with a chance of winning the RBS Six Nations. A big result here against Ireland. We'll get behind the boys and a little bit of help from the French guys. Who knows what could happen? Thanks for watching. Sign up for 0-2 inside line episode alerts at o2insideline.com and you'll never miss another episode.